Do you remember who uh, Art Laffer is? Art Laffer is the guy who came up with the Laffer curve. He's the guy who said, if you cut taxes on corporations and wealthy people enough, by cutting taxes, you will generate so much economic activity that you will actually raise the amount of revenue you derive from those lowered taxes. And Laffer had been going around for a long time with this Laffer curve, and he was advising Reagan back in the day. And finally, he had the opportunity to do a pure test took the state of Kansas when Sam Brownback became governor, I don't know, about six years ago now, maybe. And uh, Brownback instituted this set of policies. And within two years, it got so bad. They had so many cuts to their public education system, to their college system, which was at one point like sort of the huge source of pride amongst Kansians, Kansanians, whatever you call them that the Republican legislature voted to raise taxes. And they took Sam Brown back, who was such a, an, a, an illustration of how effed up those policies are. They made him ambassador to faith. And I'm not making that up. They just wanted to put him in the ether. So I don't even know where you live when you're the ambassador to faith, but he's out of the picture now. He's the ambassador to faith. But Art Laffer, he's still around. So isn't Stephen Moore. Such a huge joke that even Donald Trump said he was unfit to be on the Fed. Here um, is Sean Hannity basically saying that these two guys should be the should make up the economic task force. Oh, God help us. Tonight, I want to make one thing clear as we begin. We will get through this. We are the United States of America. And as we do, we need to also remember that the cure cannot be worse than the crisis itself. We cannot put paralyzing panic and over practical precautions uh, above Americans working when now practical. Now, what does that mean? It means getting this country back Positive. to work. doing. I'm, I'm very interested to find out what that means. Over practical solutions. Mean. It means getting this who was arguing for a long time that this was the uh, basically the flu. Go back just a little bit. Is working when now practical. Now, what does that mean? It means getting this country back to work, doing what we do best as soon as and safely as possible. It means doing everything we can do to find treatments and a cure. And like I've said, the idea of an economic task force seems like the right path to me. Bring in the minds like Art Laffer and Steve Moore and businessmen and women who underst understand Wall Street and Main Street. Also tonight, we have big, big developments on hydroxychloroquine, Dr. Yes. Oh, it turns out Donald Trump also, incidentally, has uh, interest in uh, Nervatus and in um, a French company. I can't remember uh, what the name of it is. That uh, make hydroxychloroquine. Also, of course, uh, golfing buddy has a uh, big interest in the company. I mean, of course, of course. But apparently, Rudy Giuliani, um, he was in. Rudy Giuliani was in uh, Ukraine and it found it there. I mean, I, 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 we made a joke about it the other day, but it turned out to be true. It turned out to be true. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. This is lunacy. Apparently now Fox has gotten the message. Um, we're going back, everybody. We're going back to the, we're going to regret that the cure was worse than the disease. Here is Tucker Carlson. And, you know, here's the, here's the game, folks. We got that call from Kowalski in Nebraska. And the game is this. And it's really, in many respects, a similar dynamic to health insurance and to health care costs. 80% of the healthcare costs in this country are borne by 20% of the people. That means for the vast majority of people, they don't realize how bad their health insurance was or is because they don't need it. The whole point of insurance is you're not sure if you're the person whose number is going to get called 
and you're going to have a, a disease, you're going to get hit by a bus or something like this. I think the game that Fox plays too is just like, there's going to be people who die, but we're just not going to be able to, they're not going to have access to a megaphone in such that people understand that this many people are dying. It's just going to be a number. We're not going to hear about, uh, you know, some small rural communities that have been devastated by this. We're not going to hear about the specific elements of, of suffering or immiseration. And so when this is over, we do know that everybody's going to suffer because of the economic crisis. And we can speak to that because the people who suffer from the disease will be isolated enough that it's going to sound more reasonable to talk about the economic stuff. Now, of course, it won't be the case for people who catch it, or the people who, but this is just, I think, the, the game that they're playing. Here's Tucker Carlson parroting Sean Hannity, coincidentally, on the same night. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Working is one activity we've decided. Working is one activity we've decided should not be allowed. Jogging, fishing, golf, fine. Being employed, a massive threat to public health. We've decided that offices are somehow more dangerous than supermarkets, far more dangerous, though no one has to date bothered to explain how. The result of this, but by some estimates, more than 17 million Pause Americans are I'm unemployed. I'm going to do Tucker Carlson a solid, and I'm going to explain why offices might be more dangerous than uh, supermarkets. There's two factors. One is that they probably are more dangerous because in an office, what you tend to do is sit with the same people and talk for extended periods of time. That's what we do in our office. Maybe people avoid Tucker at his office. But to the extent that we understand how this is transmitted, in those situations, there's more viral load in the air. You have more of an opportunity to catch it from someone else. In a supermarket, you're moving. You don't feel comfortable with the other people. You don't know them. Maybe you tend to keep your distance more. But then the other thing is we need food to eat. If we don't go into the supermarket for two weeks, many of us will have no food. If we don't go into the office for two weeks, we won't have money. But the government can provide us unemployment. The government can provide us a grants but they can't get us food in the same way. There it is. How? We'll run with that. The result of this? By some estimates, more than 17 million Americans are unemployed right now. That's the highest number in the history of this country. A year from now, and we should think about this, how will all of us feel about the decisions we've made in the face of this pandemic? Is there a single person who sincerely expects the coronavirus itself will hurt more people in the end than the damage we're causing in our response to it? Probably not. Mass unemployment is almost certain to cause far more harm, including physical harm, to the average family than this disease. If we did not take these measures, all of the models suggest, and they're just models, we don't know, maybe it could be worse. 2 million, 2.5 million people could die. Now, as people start to watch their neighbors and their friends dying, do you think you're going to run down to the office? Do you think you're going to go like, I'm going to a concert. I've only seen 10 people die of this or five people die of this. I mean, these people are either idiots or just liars. There's no avoiding the economic implications of this. There's no avoiding it. Are you going to go out? If you think that, that the coronavirus is out there, are you going to go out and go, go along with your business and just like, ah, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm just going into the office like nothing happened. I, we're we're going we're gonna to plow through this thing. I'm going out to, uh, I'm going out to the movies. No, of course it's going to inhibit people's economic activity. And just to show his ignorance, he goes further. Play this.
never minimize the danger of this pandemic or minimize our obligation to respond to it wisely. We've been saying that on this show for months. No thoughtful person wants to reopen baseball stadiums tomorrow or book a cruise to Shanghai. But there has to be a more balanced course than the one we are on now. For most people, going to work cannot be more dangerous than buying produce at Safeway twice a week. And if it is more dangerous, tell it, tell us how it is more dangerous and be specific when you describe that. Otherwise, it's time to start caring about the entire population. Healthy people are suffering badly, too. The reason why, I don't know who's telling you, but the reason why they're not telling you is because the dum-dums who you support in the White House have been in such denial and are subjugating the medical personnel that we don't have a straight answer for these things because they fired all the people working on epidemics from the CDC in China because they fired the people whose job was to oversee a pandemic response on the National Security Council. They fired the people who are in charge of pandemic response in the Department of Homeland Security. We don't have answers. That is the big problem. We don't have answers. We don't have a mechanism to provide answers to Americans. So there is no way to simply say like, okay, these people, it's safe for you to go back. These people, it's not. We don't have tests. If we had tests, it would be much easier. If we had the capacity to test people and say, okay, you've had it, you're okay, you can go in. You haven't had it, but you're in a low risk group. You can go in, but there needs to be masks. Everybody wears masks. You have not had it. You're in a high risk group. You cannot go in. But none of the things that we expect government to do, and frankly, just about any other government would do, have been done largely because of ideology, also just because of sheer incompetence, an ideology that Tucker Carlson shares. And an incompetence that Tucker Carlson has been essentially tent polling and supporting for years now. 